Okay, guys, I'm not used to talking with a microphone, so just bear with me. Um, first of all, thanks, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I think that Elizabeth and Kelly and Kylie are just amazing. I love working with groups of women that are doing innovative things, and they've been so wonderful to work with. And so let's give it up for Elizabeth, Kelly, and Kylie, because it's not easy to do this. Um, so I also, without sounding cliche, I want to be really thankful um, to Creative Mornings for forcing me to stop, reflect, and really create this presentation for you all today because everyone here knows that you're, you know, life is busy and before you know it, a year passes, before you know it, five years pass. And really what this presentation has forced me to do is realize that I blinked and 20 years went by. So when I think about my, my, my past, my history of restarting, uh, it's, I, I really went back 20 years to understand what the last two decades of my life has been like. And so I'm very thankful to you all for, for letting me do that. And so in having to reflect on restarting, I had to do two things. I had to count how many times I've actually restarted, and then I had to define what restarting is. And so here's my loose definition of restarting. I believe that restarting is defined as anything that takes your life and turns it upside down. That can run the spectrum between professional and personal. It includes failures, successes, births, deaths, heartbreaks, and even love. Since 2007, by my count, I've restarted 10 times. That's more than once a year. Since 1998, I have restarted more than 20 times. That's two decades, 20 years, and more than 20 restarts. But who's counting, right? So here are the highlights. The highlights include starting law school, dropping out of law school in my second year, starting a master's in anthropology, twice, <laughs> not finishing, twice, going to culinary school, getting a couple little mini masters along the way in things like pre-Columbian food and stuff like that, getting married, becoming a mom, getting divorced, Moving to Mexico City, Miami, New Orleans, Taos, Santa Fe, Buenos Aires, New Braunfels, and San Antonio. Getting my dream job, quitting my dream job, failed partnerships, becoming an entrepreneur more than once, losing my way, finding my way, falling in love, having my heart broken, finding my soulmate, finding my tribe, practicing culinary medicine, and finding Ayurveda. So my question to all of you is, have you found your calling in life? Are you happy? Are you thriving? Are you inspired? Do you feel like you're making a difference in the world? And have you found your tribe? And if you're not asking yourself these questions, you should be. Five years ago, I made the decision to change my life in a meditation session. I was in this super dark period of my life. I had never experienced darkness like that before. I was swimming in a sea of despair and failure, and it was ripping my life apart. And there I was in this meditation session, and I was, I was literally at a fork in the road. And it was very clear to me in this meditation session, because as I was sitting there and I was visually seeing a fork in the road, 
the left-hand side of the fork was dark and scary. The right-hand side of the fork was bright and I could see a mountain and there was a ton of sunlight beaming down on that mountain. And it was at that moment that my choices were crystal clear. I could either turn left and I could continue to exist in sadness and failure, or I could turn to the right and I could walk towards that light and I could heal myself. And when I left that meditation session, I went home and what happened, I, don't, I can't really explain it, but I just literally, I got a pen, a piece of paper, and I started writing down my vision, my dream. And my dream was to heal people with food. And it was such a powerful dream that I decided to restart my life. I decided to change my entire life. And you're thinking, well, she was our, you know, I was already a chef, right? I was, I, I was working at a cooking school. I was already a chef, but I was doing very different work. And what I had decided to do at that moment was pretty life altering. So what ensued next is I walked into my boss's office. I told him that I was quitting my job. I didn't know when, but it was gonna be within a matter of months and that I was going to be healing people with food. And I didn't have a coherent business plan. I didn't have capital, but I had this dream which was so strong, I actually felt like, like I was pregnant. I felt like I was pregnant with this dream and that I had to give birth to it. And that was also, by the way, highly effective because all my bosses were males. So when they tried to dissuade me from quitting, I just told them that I was pregnant with an idea and it totally debilitated <laughs> them. And, and it made it very easy for me to just continue to walk forward, you know? Uh, so note to self, right? So uh, shortly thereafter, I found Ayurveda. I had not found Ayurveda before I made this decision. Um, so Ayurveda found me, I found Ayurveda, however you, wanna, however you wanna call it. But I felt like somebody had given me the keys to myself and I could finally unlock the secrets of life. For me, that's what Ayurveda has meant. And it's really helped me explain why I am the way I am and it allows me to understand why other people are the way they are. And this is highly effective. It's highly effective when you're trying to empower people to heal themselves. It's empowering when you're trying to heal yourself. And it's also really empowering with personal relationships, whether it's employees, friends, family members, partners, understanding the uniqueness of why we are the way we are and not being so rigid or thinking, well, you're supposed to be like me and this is how I am or understanding why your faults exist. And, 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 and then it allows you to be a little bit more passionate with yourself and a little bit more compassionate with other people. So I was 38 years old when I had this vision. My mission was clear. I wanted to take all the knowledge that I had amassed in all those different moves over the last two decades of my life. I had become kind of like a walking encyclopedia of food and culture. And Ayurveda, you know, was paralleling or allowing me to harness a lot of this information in a way that I felt created a roadmap um, to help people heal themselves. And using my knowledge of superfoods um, and, and, and superfoods and, and, and spices and, and cooking techniques from around the world, mixing that with Ayurveda, and I thought I had this really powerful formula for, um, for, for personal growth and, and healing people. So I jumped feet first, not really thinking how I would get from point A to point B, but only knowing that I had to do it fast. So, is anybody here approaching 40? Is, is it anybody, is everybody here? Okay, well as you're approaching 40, at least when I was approaching 40, um, I was terrified. 
terrified that I hadn't completed everything that I wanted to complete by the time I was 40. And I was even more terrified of winding up being 50 years old, not having realized my dreams, and having just this whole sea of what ifs. So over the, so what has ensued over the last five years of healing, others and myself in the process has humbled me, it's pushed me to my limits, physically, mentally, emotionally, and it has been the single most rewarding experience of my life aside from motherhood. And so I've tried to distill the big lessons into three lessons, so that's the great part about today. You only have to remember three things, right? <laughs> and I, I also have a the general rule of thumb that if you have to remember more things than you have fingers, you're, you're Dunsky. You can't do that. I can, I can barely remember five things, right? So rule number one, be boldly courageous and don't be afraid to jump. But there's a caveat. You better have a blindfold. Why? Because when you jump, it's scary, and you can only take in so much information at one time. So I tell people, put on your blindfold before you jump, because you're gonna need it, okay? Because you should not be looking back, and you should not be looking so far forward that you see all the dangers. <laughs> it's like a zip line. You just need to get from your point to the next point. You don't need to see the whole thing, and you don't need to look down. You just need to get from point A to point B. And when, you're, when you restart many times, and when we're talking about entrepreneurism, it's just getting to the next day, okay? Otherwise, your circuits will overload, you might break down. And so, ignorance is bliss, and what you can't see won't hurt you. Rule number two, insanity is a prerequisite. <laughs> Why? Isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result? Well, that's what you do. You fail and fail and fail and fail and you just keep going. Because I like to say failure is the fuel to keep, you know, to success. So if you're not willing to get out there and be absolutely insane, and just do the same thing over and over and over and fail miserably and get back up and just have faith that it's gonna work out at some point, then, um, then, then maybe you shouldn't do it. But insanity is a prerequisite. My old boss used to tell me that he learned far more from, your, from his failures than he ever did from his successes. And I can tell you that I would not be standing here today if I had not failed miserably over and over again. So insanity is a prerequisite. If you play it safe and you aren't willing to take risks and fail a lot, you won't achieve your dreams, period. Rule number three, have a dream so you can fearlessly lead and inspire other people. And I like to borrow a little bit of the psychology of the golden circle theory, if anyone is familiar with that, but it's really powerful because it, dis it dissects why certain leaders and organizations have been incredibly uh, successful. So here's probably the easiest example. Martin Luther King had a dream. He did not have a business plan for civil rights, right? Steve Jobs wasn't out there trying to peddle cell, pho uh, you know, cell phones to us. He was trying to basically provide a new way of communicating and a new way of life. Organizations who know why they do something are most successful. These are the organizations that I, that, that I study. Because why you do something matters. Your customers and your employees need to be inspired. There needs to be a why behind what you do. You need a tribe. This is why Creative Mornings is, is important. You guys getting together, the sharing, you know, the, everybody talking and, and, and collaborating. You need to find a group of people because the social fabric is an essential part of, of our happiness and, and, and security. You should hire people who believe what you believe because it takes a village, 
right? And the psychology of the golden circle is, is if you can harness and capture this, this why, this essential why you're doing something, not how, leave that to the business plan, but why you're doing something, because that's gonna drive you to complete the business plan, to make the business plan better, or to just continue to refine and keep going. The why drives our psychology, and it creates positivity, it creates productivity, and it creates energy. And you need all three of these components. These are like, this is like the formula. It's like the recipe for entrepreneurism and success. You need all of these things in order to be able to thrive. And you need them all the time. So for me, Ayurveda is the why behind health. Before I realized, you know, before I found Ayurveda, I wasn't 100% sure what was really good for my body and what I could really, you know, what was good for other people's bodies. And so for me, it has opened my eyes to what health and wellness can be and what it should look like. It's provided a nurturing cocoon for me and my rebirth and my renaissance. I can tell you I would not be standing here today healthful with m as much energy and vitality as I have today if I had not been practicing Ayurveda along the way. It's been very, very important. How many people, how many people go through a startup or a rebirth and their, their health takes a dip because they don't, they don't have the balance in their life? So for me, it's provided balance and a guiding light. And I hope that if you take anything away from today's talk, you will discover the why behind what inspires you and you will get on your way. Thank you so much.